Hello, everybody. It's Mike Cavill, with Savage Kingdom's role-playing game and Fire in the Head production. So I thought I would do another video. I did one about a week ago, so a little bit quicker than I've normally been doing them. So this is another one in the series of the Savage Kingdoms of Astagonia. Astagonia being the Western continent, as you may or may not know, which is sort of the European-esque continent in the known world of Savage Kingdoms. Astagonia is. Uh, so the last video was uh, about Thrymnor, the Thrymnori uh, Dwargar to be particular. Uh, and this one will be about Olderak, which is another Dwargar realm or dwarf realm in the Ice Claw Mountains further north of Thrymnor, kind of northwest, actually, actually really probably more west than north. West by northwest, shall we say. Excellent movie, by the way. But it was north by northwest. Anyway, uh, so... We will be, um, and by the way, the, I'll start off with the racial section like I did last time, but since I covered that, since most of it, 90, 95% of it is the same as Dwargar, or Dwargar, generally speaking, there are a couple of um, differences game mechanically between Olderaki and Thrymnori Dwarves or Dwargar, but it's very minuscule, so I'll just kind of skim through that uh, fairly quickly. So right there is our Dwargar photo. It's not really a photo at all, actually. It's art. And this is page 44, uh, which is where I started in the last video about Thrymnor. So here we go. So like I said, I'll just kind of skim through it because you can watch the other video for the more um, racial, g generic Dwargar sort of stats and uh, that sort of stuff, game statist statistics. So... Uh, just real quick, so Dwargar, sometimes called dwarves by humankind and not always to Dwargar appreciation, this is a hardy and enduring race of short-statured but incredibly stocky people whose males grow impressive beards, often kept in intricate braids or worn down to ankle level, and I think I mentioned in the last video that they prefer braids, but yeah, whatever. Uh, Dwargar are precise craftsmen or craftsfolk, especially of metal and stone, and make extremely resilient warriors. Thrymnor and Olderak are their primary kingdom holds, as has been mentioned. Both of those kingdoms in the north, uh, one is in the Sanctuary Mountains, that's Thrymnor from the last video, and Olderak, this video, is in the uh, Ice Claw Mountains, which are the big mountain range that runs uh, north to northwest. I'll show you a map here in a second after I do the, the Dorgar stuff really quick uh, of Astagonia. So, Allowable callings, alchemist, bard, berserker, craftsman, gladiator, healer, hunter, knight, merchant, noble, priest, sage, seer, soldier, thief, witch. Allowable for Dwargard, uh, whether you are, uh, regardless if you are Thrymnori or Olderaki. Uh, as mentioned in the last video, and I'll just say it again really quick, so vigor is kind of the, um, the, the, the best attribute for, uh, the most notable attribute for Dwargar. Uh, that can only start uh, at absolute minimum of minus one. They can start with as high as plus four, and they can max out at plus six eventually through advancement and whatnot. Uh, let's see, special abilities. I'll just really quickly. Ancient enemies, uh, they can choose dragons, giants, or trolls as enemies, because this is the same as the Thrymnori in this case. Uh, crafts, folk, they, get, they can get a plus one to crafting skill rolls in regards to working with metal or stone, as well as appraising such for quality and value. Uh, let's see, deep sight. They can see in the dark up to 20 yards, uh, as if it were twilight. And this is in absolute darkness as well, unlike uh, she sight. Um, same as nether sight, they can see in absolute darkness. Uh, earth and fire affinity. Dwargar gain a plus one bonus to magical arts, earth and fire skill rolls. Uh, note that you still must have the magic affinity talent, uh, or at least one skill level in a magical arts discipline, before you can even attempt any magical arts skill tasks, as you know. Favorite enemy, gain one of the following, or favorite weaponry. Uh, so you get, they get to choose battle axe, great axe, hand axe, mauler, warhammer, or a range weaponry uh, specialty, thrown, hammer, or hand axe. Uh, hardiness, plus one to endurance rolls when you're resisting diseases and poisons. Uh, this is where there's a difference. Furthermore, if from Thrymnor, uh, to be a Thrymnor Dorgar, this bonus also applies to resisting heat effects. Or from Olderak, the bonus instead applies to resisting cold effects. So there you go. Uh, rune Mage. Dwargar characters pay two points less for the Rune Magic talent. Rune Magic. Uh, short Stride. Dwargar suffer minus two to ability as uh, to mobility as well as to acrobatics or athletic skill rolls involving jumping or leaping. Because they have kind of short legs. They have very strong legs, uh, but they're a little on the shortish side. So 
That's why it's called short stride. So Thrymnori dwarves and Noldoraki dwarves are exactly the same. Pretty much all of those things I just listed, other than uh, hardiness, where uh, Thrymnori gained the bonus to heat. And to, I didn't explain that in the last one, so might be wondering uh, why Dwargar, Thrymnori Dwargar in particular, have resistance to heat when they live in the north, uh, particularly in the high altitudes of the mountains. Uh, that's because they are closer to the fort, so there's more, uh, so Alderac obviously has bunches of forges too, because they're Dwargar, that's what they do. But in Thrymnor in particular, there are a lot of uh, forges. In fact, they're, uh, the crafts god Duridan, as I might have mentioned before, uh, is probably the patron deity of, of uh, Thrymnor, really, uh, even more so than Baldak, which is their sort of war and battle god. So a lot of forge fires is what that kind of represents. So, all right, just to, uh, just to sort of uh, touch on that a little bit more. Uh, favorite talents, I did that in the last video. It's uh, They're all the same between Thrymnori and Alderaki, it appears. Uh, favorite weaknesses are the same between the two, so if you want to go back to the Thrymnor video to see that. Um, but to be semi-inclusive in this video as well, I'll do favorite weaknesses really quick. Addiction to Ale or Mead, Oathbound, Obsession with Gold or Gems, Phobia, the Sea or Open Spaces, and Rotund. Uh, our favorite weaknesses, just like the, the Thrymnori. So, uh, favorite talents, like I said, uh, they favor a lot of battle talents. The Dwarg are a, a, a sort of a warrior race. Uh, they prefer peace, but uh, they are always ready for uh, violent conflict if need be to defend their realms, their their homes, and their minds and such. Uh, favorite blood talents, Dragon Kindred. They, they, they have a few mystical talents that are favored. Uh, they have a... They have, Few social talents that are favored. Only one subterfuge talent that is a favorite talent for Dorgar, whether you're Thrymnori or Olderaki, and that's Trap Setter. Uh, other talents uh, Commanding Voice, Grit, Heirloom, Ken Keen Memory, Time Sense, Valorous, Willful Presence. And then I just did the favorite weaknesses. I kind of did it out of order there. Uh, starting languages, so just like. Um, oh, wait, so this is a difference between Thrymnori and Dorgar uh, somewhat. Uh, so just like Thrymnori Dwargar, Olderaki Dwargar, native tongue is Dwargar, because between the two realms is still the same language. There's probably a few dialectal differences, uh, for example, between, say, American English, 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 British English, Australian English, whatnot, uh, to that degree. So, uh, and possibly not even really to that degree. To degree. In addition, uh, so in addition, if your intellect is minus one or better, you may ch uh, also choose one of the following. So if you're from Olderac, which is what we're doing, uh, you can choose Norish, Carnian, She, Goblin Tongue, Troll Speak, Giant Speech, or Dragon Speech. Uh, so Malovian and Scathian are the choices for Thrymnor. So if you're Thrymnori. So yeah, so that's that being the difference right there. And that's because of all of uh, because of uh, uh, proximity. So, all right, um, cultural item, I think they're all the uh, older Aki door. Yeah, it's all the same, depending on where you come from. Uh, you could choose a battle axe, hand axe, war hammer of exceptional quality. Again, I did this in the last video, so I'm just doing this really quick. Instead of exceptional quality, craftsman's tools, um, a harness of Dwargar mail, um, which is like a heavy chain mail, a war helm of exceptional quality, a rune stone talisman, a Dwargar war pony, a drinking horn of Dwargar stout ale, a semi-enchanted worm scale, possibly belonging to Florindorax of old, which is the was probably the most powerful dragon in the West, if, if not the whole known world, even more mighty than Volnathrax and Gethrax, also known as Tyran Gethrian, who may or may not still be alive. So he's very ancient, about 5,000 years old. About 5,500. Uh, all right, so and you might have noticed I'm pronouncing Dwergar as Dwergar. Uh, I've done the actual research. It's based on it. It actually means dwarves in like old Norse or something. Uh, it's like either pronounced Dwargar or uh, Dwargar, which is what I used to say, Dwargar. And then I started saying Dwargar because I feel like Dwargar, is, you, you can see where the word dwarf came from, more from Dwargar as opposed to Dwargar. But actually, uh, in modern Scandinavian languages, either is correct. Um, I have this uh, cool sort of uh, accent dialogue, di uh, dialect database thing that I use as an actor when I'm studying different dialects according to whatever role that I'm I'm in or whatever. Uh, and so it seems that Dwergar is, Dwergar I think is Norwegian in particular, and Dwergar seems to be 
Swedish. I th anyway, it's one or the other, and maybe Danish as well. So again, either really are correct. So, all right. Um, let's see what else can I touch on before I go into the more specific old Iraqi stuff in the Gazetteer, etc. Uh, general code of honor of old Iraqi dwarves is pretty much the same as Thrymnor. I mean, it's literally written as the same. There's probably some actual minor little differences if you were to really deep dive into it. Um, let's see if I can pick some of those out, actually. Keep the secret lore of the deep to oneself when in, in the surface world. Yeah, that would be between the, both Thrymnor and old Iraqi. Honor the Dwargar king and the ancient sovereignty of his clan's lineage. Yeah, definitely in both realms. Uh, that's high up there. Honor, uh, honor the ways of Durudin and Baldak above all other deities. So that could be broken down a little bit, uh, going back to what I mentioned just a minute or two ago. So Durudin would be really kind of the more known or more worshipped deity in Thrymnor, uh, being the god, a god of craft and uh, life and creation. Life. Did I say life? Uh, and Baldak is the uh, more favored deity of Olderak, where they favored, uh, favor him more as a war god. It's more, it's a little wilder where they are. They have to deal with violent conflict a little bit more of the Olderaki, so they probably put Baldak even before Durin in there. There are other dwarven deities as well, but those are the two main ones. Uh, there is a dwarven goddess named Thremna, um, and there's another very minor god named Drawn, but some of the Dorg, I believe that Drawn and Thremna are really the same. God, just different names or goddess. Uh, anyway, she's responsible for um, uh, fire and also ideas, idealism like fire in the head, which is where I get my production company's name. If you're not familiar with that term, it's an old, it's a Celtic term meaning uh, to be inspired, to come up with inspiration, creativity, to literally have fire sparks of creativity or forge fire in your head, as it were. Um, honor and respect your clan, its members, and its ancient traditions. That would be from both from Nora and Alderac. Uh, punish serious insults by a formal duel or by, or by acceptance of apology gifts, uh, meaning that uh, you're, you're giving gifts and apology since Dorgar are fairly materialistic. They, if they have a few uh, sort of overarching racial flaws, it might be just kind of, kind of like you see in Tolkien. They're very good and hardworking people, right? Very honorable, you know, but uh, I guess if they have any flaws, that they can tend to be a little materialistic and they can be a little greedy at times. Uh, so they do place an emphasis on that sort of thing. They live in a very material world. They work with their hands. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're not spiritual, but they are very literally earth. You know, they live on and in the earth very often. So so in a, in a spiritual and physical sense, they are very, um, or a literal and um, uh, metaphorical since they are very uh, materialistic. Uh, craft no object or light no forge fire until at least half payment has been collected. So again, that's kind of a materialistic thing, but it's also a realistic thing. It's like they don't want to get ripped off. They don't want to make something for someone and the person never pays for it. And they just wasted a week of their life or two weeks or a month or whatever doing that. Uh, and that's just very dishonorable and it's very irritating to Dorgar. And most Dorgar will, some of them will hunt you down if you uh, do that mess to them. Um, and that's true between Thrymnor and Olderac as well. So while while I'm on the subject very quickly, so I keep going between Olderac and Thrymnor, right? So this video is really about Olderac. The previous video was about Thrymnor. Uh, those are the two main dwarven kingdoms or dwarven realms or dwargar realms in Astagonia. But it's not to say that there aren't other um, sort of colonies or other realms that are more minor. Particularly, there is one in northern, well, north central Laurentia, Laurentian Empire, uh, between the, pro the northern province of Hibernium and uh, the, the middle province of what is it, Latagon. Uh, there's a mountain range. In fact, that's the provincial border. Is these this mountain range running east to west? It's kind of a little offshoot of the Blood Rock Mountains, jutting in you know, from west to east, uh, called the Saint, uh, not the Sanctuary Mountains, the uh, Golden Mountains, the Golden Mountains. Um, they're called the Golden Mountains not because they have necessarily have a golden sheen to them, but a lot of gold was found in there. So the Laurentians struck gold, um, or actually the Dwargar were there first and had these gold mines, and the Laurentians, when they kind of came in and began to settle um, Laurentia, you know, they were Pridonian explorers eventually, and they came and uh, sort of conquered all the sort of minor human tribes that were in the area. They never really co conquered the Dwargar. The Dwargar didn't really uh, fight them. They kind of hid in the Golden Mountains. 
uh, ready to defend themselves if need be. Lorinthians finally encountered them, uh, but instead of violent conflict, the Lorinthians uh, they had a pretty good treaty between the two, some good diplomacy going on there. Uh, because the uh, the, the Dorgar sort of respected Lorinthians to a degree that they were uh, willing to pay well for their uh, for their goods, particularly this gold mine. And so instead of Lorinthians sort of seizing the gold mines from the Dorgar, they almost kind of, uh, I wouldn't say enslave them, uh, but they definitely put a lot of demands on the Dorgar to produce a lot of gold out of this mine. And that's why it's called the Golden Mountains. Uh, and that's a long way to say that there is a colony of Dorgar still there to this very day in the current um, timeline of, of Savage Kingdoms, if you're honoring that. Uh, according to the book, I think it's 571. Um, I see imperial calendar if you're, uh, for the Laurentian calendar. There's various other calendars and the various other cultures as I hit my hat. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, but the Laurentian calendar is obviously the big one in Laurentia and really kind of in the south in general, although the Pridonians sort of have a calendar too. But for the most part, they honor the imperial one. So 571. Uh, so even in the current uh, year 571, the Dorgar are still there. They're not as many anymore. Some of them have like during the time where the Laurentians were putting all this pressure on them to produce gold out of the mines, some of the Dorgar secretly fled. They went to Thrymnor, a lot of them, and some might even made their way to Olderac, or they started started even smaller colonies off by themselves. So, so basically, of Olderac, Thrymnor, um, this colony in the Golden Mountains, which I need to, I think it's called, man, Baldrac. Nope, that's the name of the god. I'll find it. It's not really that important. In fact, it might be in the Laurentian Gazetteer when I go to that section here in a few minutes. I'll see if I can remember to find it. I do this thing, these things in one take, by the way, so I don't, I don't edit anything or redo it. Um, I just do one take, and, and that's that's what you get. It's very natural and in the moment, and that sort of thing. All right, so um, that was a little side note about Dwargar realms. All right, so now I will go to the Gazetteer. I said in a couple of minutes, but literally in about 15 seconds later. I'm headed there. All right, so the Gazetteer chapter, and those of you who don't know what the term Gazetteer means, because uh, yeah, it is kind of an obscure word, um, although if you're familiar with RPG books, you've probably heard the term, meaning that it is a um, kind of a chapter about geology, geography, and uh, even political boundaries So, uh, of a world, of the real world, or in this case, a fantasy world. So, um, while I remember, I'm going to go see the Laurentian section, the section, section about the Empire of Laurentia, and see if I can find that Dorgar, the name of that Dorgar realm. I have it in some of my old maps and notes somewhere that probably aren't even published. Uh, do, do, just really quick, let's see. Notable characters, enemies, and allies. Probably not there. Heraldry and insignia, probably not there. All right, Denison's um, geography. Okay, here we go. Blood Rock Mountains. The Golden Mountains, in a less severe range, dominate the central north, serving as the main boundaries between the provinces of Latagon and Goldarius. I mentioned that earlier. The mighty drag, uh, the, the mighty. Dragon Sea serves as the easternmost borders of Laurentia. Well, let's see. Okay. No, it doesn't mention the name of that Dwarven realm or Dwargar realm in the Golden Mountains. All right. Moving on, in that case, to Olderac itself, which will be on page, for those of you who have a Savage Kingdoms 3rd edition core rule book, page 336. No, 337. All right. So 337. Here is our map of Olderac, next to Zurog. I'll probably have to do, I'll do a video of that one, maybe next. Uh, actually, probably Gethrax will be next. But anyway, Olderac, you can see the map right there. So, the only city that shows up, the only uh, sort of capital of Olderac that shows up on the map there is Belderon. Belderon. Now, there are other sort of mines and, and fortress cities in Olderac, but they're not very well known. That's the only one that's kind of known. Olderac is even more of a private sort of semi hidden realm uh just like thrymnor is but probably even more to a degree and it's also much harder to get to so as you can imagine alderac is very um self-contained like it does produce its own resources for the most part there's a few things that it doesn't produce but they're 
pretty minor things, and the older Aki uh, once um, were a little bit more violent than your typical Dorogar, and they still kind of are. Like I said, they're kind of warlike. Uh, they would go off and raid for th stuff they didn't have, uh, whereas more modern Dorogar and the current age of man would be that uh, they would probably trade, but um, not always. I mean, occasionally a clan or two breaks off and kind of does its own thing. And that's another side note to remember in uh, the Savage Kingdoms role-playing game. It is more of a Dark Ages setting, and I think some players are more used to Central, uh, um, High Middle Ages to Early Renaissance, where, where kingdoms and realms were a little more solidified for the most part, even though that, that's actually overdone as well. Uh, and I think a lot of gamers, uh, role players, think that everyone from this kingdom does this thing, and everyone from here, it's like, no, there's still a lot of very, there's a lot of people who don't honor the, the so-called king of that realm or queen or whatever lord, if there is one. In that case, it's just a wild territory or collection of tribes at that point. But anyway, it's neither here nor there. So when I say Old Iraq is ruled by King Heltak Troll Crusher, and it is, it doesn't mean there's not a clan or two who uh, secretly goes against his wishes, perhaps even might even rise against him occasion, or would be unhappy with some of his uh, laws and might leave to start their own colony. So keep this in mind as a game master and as a player that this kind of stuff uh, could happen. It also makes for very good storytelling and very good adventures. All right, anyway, so you saw the map of Alderac. Uh, you can see the mountains were very uh, large. These are the pretty much the heart of the Ice Claw Mountains. These are some of the tallest uh, uh, mountains in the north, and uh, some of them uh, reach heights of about 14,000 feet, 15,000 feet. So um, we're not talking Mount Everest by any means, but we're talking uh, uh, the, the Rockies for the most part in the real world. Okay, so Old Iraq, let's see. Uh, I'll read some of this. Without, I'm not going to read all of it, obviously. So it is ruled by King Heltak Troll Crusher, like I mentioned. Um, Troll Crusher, Troll Crusher. Troll Crusher was his nickname, was a kenning or an epithet, and eventually became his house name. So he was known for slaying trolls, and when he was a young Dorgar, he killed one by himself when he was only about 50 years old, which is barely an adult for a Dorgar, and sort of earned the title. And um, and that became, as he became king, as he rode basically to become king by his own hand, his noble house became known, or royal house became known as Troll Crusher. So it became an official name, so to speak. Uh, let's see. Heltak often calls on special champions or heroes to do his bidding, such as Bokar, Deep Hammer, warrior and champion of, uh, champion of Durin, god of crafting gold and the forge. The legendary hammer of Beldak can be found here, which is why that city is called Belderon. Uh, the hammer of Beldak can be found here, a powerful relic said to possess the power to reforge a person's soul. So it has the power to restore life, supposedly, and probably other powers as well. The climate of Alderac is quite brutal in the winter moons, uh, where there is much snow and ice, and only the rare summer months provide any real comfort here. One of the many reasons the Dwargar folk prefer to build underground, where the temperature can be regulated. The heraldry of the kingdom of Alderac is two red axes on a field of brown or deep gold. The Alderaki calendar, like so many other details of Dwargar culture, the calendarial, uh, ca calendarial system used by Alderaki people is exactly the same as the one used by the Thrindori Dwargar. Um, and that's a, that actually reminds me of a important note. So the, the, the two realms used to be sort of one, not in the sense that I've done the Shi videos about Kalendor or about Arvalendor, which is this kind of Shi empire, almost this massive kingdom, united kingdom for the most part. Uh, and then it split apart with the, uh, the breaking of art, causing the breaking of Arvalendor and it caused a rift between the Shi, which you know, they, they became the dark Shi and the Aluna Shi or the light Shi, whatever, uh, Blah, blah, blah. So uh, with the Dorgar, there was never this massive realm. It wasn't completely united, but the first realm was Thrymnor. Uh, so a lot of Dwarven clans kind of centralized around this idea of a united kingdom. While others scattered off, like I mentioned earlier, to different parts of the world, a large continent going more northwest into deeper into the Ice Claw Mountains, which eventually became Alderac. So Thrymnor was first, Alderac was second. It's the... Uh, Younger of the two realm, but even even so, it's um, it's pretty old, and so therefore it, it honors the original uh, Dwargar calendar. So they use the same calendar, which um, I'll mention again really quick. I think I mentioned in the last video, but I'll just kind of go over it again, just for continuity's sake and inclus 
exclusivity. Um, all right, so 360-day calendar, warranting a full year, a trip around the sun. Uh, uh, the Dwargar rep- um, of Thrymnor and Alderac recognize three seasons of four months each, spring, summer, and winter. They don't really have an autumn, or at least they don't really count it. They prefer to count uh, three seasons of four moons instead of uh, uh, four seasons of three moons each. Uh, autumn is simply the initial part of the winter moons, and the first moon of spring is simply the thawing, the transition between the dead of winter and the growing time of spring. Each year is recorded with its own name, a miniature eon unto itself, such as the year of the Golden Forge or the year of the Dragon Returned. These are just examples. Every cycle of 44 years is considered a baga, which usually the you know, Dwargar term, which equates to a typical Dwargar generation. So baga basically means generation, life generation, or life cycle in Dwargar. The typical Dwargar month, which constitutes uh, five six-day weeks, so they have um, five weeks in a month that are six days each, uh, has days named Forge Day, War Day, Deep Day, Iron Day, Silver Day, and Gold Day. There is no dedicated rest day or worship day, which should be interesting. The Dwargar are very hard work, and they don't really have a dedicated rest day. They might occasionally have a holy day where they spend uh, not working, but to them, work is, um, like a lot of people, but even more so with Dwargar, very, very important as part of that. Like, you just don't really take a day off because that's just what you do. So where we might think about Oh, I, it's a day watching television or, or at the bar or drinking or something. Um, their idea of that is being in the forge, being at the forge, or being uh, in the mines or something like that, for the most part. But like all creatures, mortal creatures of flesh and blood, they do need to relax every so often and uh, decompress, as we like to say nowadays. Right. Um, all right, so the, the section in the Gazetteer about Olderak is... Short, much shorter than Thrymnor, so I kind of skimped on that one uh, when I was doing the book, just for um, brevity. Uh, but so I read most of what was in there. That's almost literally what I read was pretty much the whole system, the whole uh, the whole section. Um, actually, the first part I really kind of skipped over. And I'll just say it really quick. Another Dwargar kingdom. This this one way up in the northwest central reaches of the Ice Claw Mountains. Alderac is fairly similar to Thrymnor in customs military and overall culture. Belderon, as I mentioned, is the capital city of this realm, the seat of King Heltak Trollcrusher, a mighty king who is said to be nearly three centuries old. Heltak often calls him uh, on special champions. Okay, the rest of it I, I read, so I joined those two together, completely out of order, so such is my brain. Um, I think that's going to do it. This is a much shorter one because I covered most of the base Dwargar um, stuff in the previous video about Thrymnor. So this video was about Olderac once again. And this book, just to show it off again, that I was referencing is the Savage Kingdom uh, SK3 or Savage Kingdom's third edition. That's what this three with the dragon represents, by the way. Core rulebook. So get yours today at Drive Through RPG. That is. All that stuff is in there, and just to show it off once again as I go off camera briefly, this is the Savage East, which is the newest companion guide to the core rulebook. It is an expansion of the um, SK Known World, uh, but, but not only just, just to be clear, not only expanding the lore of the world or the fluff of the world, um, it actually is a, a lot more core, a lot more mechanics as well. There's new talents and new spells, new races from the East, new uh, cultures and ethnicities from the East, um, new spells, new elite orders or orders and sects, uh, that sort of thing. Some new equipment, um, mostly from the East, but there's a few things that I sort of left out from the West or got edited out that I've kind of included. So it's not all about the East. It is mostly about the Eastern part of the known world, but not entirely. In fact, a lot of the new talents can go either which way. Um, same with this, with spells. Uh, some of the new equipment is very specifically the East, but, but not necessarily all of it. And you would find merchants carrying a lot of that stuff over here, blah, 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 etc. So... Anyway, thanks as usual, everybody who watch these things, please like, subscribe, and share, and all that stuff, We're trying to grow the channel, and therefore the game, and the little tiny company itself. So, thanks again, and uh, happy holidays, and you guys, I'll talk to you again soon.